locomotive design for each type of work, a locomotive which would be more efficient. In the locomotive drawing offices, many projected designs were examined to see which, if any, could offer better economy or better power. The GWR locomotive sketchpad allows you to put yourself in the position of one of the draftsmen in the Great Western Drawing Offices at Swindon to outline steam locomotives based on those Great Western principles of locomotive design which were in use from about 1900 to nationalisation in 1948. To design a steam locomotive today, you would need a computer-assisted design or CAD package costing thousands of pounds and you would need a great deal of time. The GWR, like other companies, produced outline locomotive diagrams or weight diagrams. Given a number of leading dimensions and option choices, the GWR locomotive sketchpad produces a modern equivalent of the locomotive diagram, a straightforward elevation showing you the possible appearance of a great western design locomotive. You can produce a locomotive design very quickly and outline from scratch in about 20 minutes. Your locomotive is based on the design of Great Western Railway locomotives during the first half of the 20th century. All elevations are drawn to the nearest inch only, the program uses integer arithmetic, and can at best be representative of a locomotive or locomotive class. This program is not for the rivet counter. Most of the locomotives supplied with the program have been checked against available drawings so they are as accurate as possible. Here, the King Class locomotive as drawn by the GWR locomotive sketchpad, from the data file provided as part of the program, has been overlaid over an original Swindon locomotive diagram. There are some differences, due, some due to the rules and algorithms used in the program. But there's no guarantee that the locomotive weight diagram was completely accurate either. The cab window drawn by the sketchpad is actually nearer correct than that in some published 4mm drawings. This section shows the GWR locomotive sketchpad graphical design or drawing wizard in use to draw a fictional locomotive. We start with the wheels. In this window you add a wheel and then resize it using the resize handles, the black squares around the wheels bounding box. When you have placed and resized all your wheels, the wizard calculates the wheel arrangement for you. Alternatively, you specify the wheel arrangement and then resize and move the groups of wheels. In each of the windows that make up the graphical design or drawing wizard, you can resize and move the locomotive component. You resize the shape by grabbing one of the resize handles with the mouse and dragging it in the direction shown by the cursor. You move the shape, when you are allowed to, by clicking inside the shape and then dragging the whole shape around, wheel, foot plate, boiler, in the direction shown by the cursor. When you come to draw the cab, you also have to choose whether you are drawing a tender locomotive or a tank locomotive. With tender selected, you continue to size the cab, the tender body and tender wheels. The last window of the wizard lets you choose the nameplate size and the livery, and the option of saving this new locomotive design. The result can be compared to available outline sketches. If it is wrong, it is very easy to make changes. The other wizard is a dimensions-based or text-based wizard. 
This is very useful if you have a good idea of your locomotive's principal dimensions. Once again the wizard starts with the wheels, moving through the leading, driving and trailing wheels. You have the option of seeing your locomotive design stage by stage as you use the forms. Select the livery and the nameplate if there is one, and then review the locomotive dimensions. Save the locomotive design so that you can view and edit the new locomotive. The result can be compared to available outline sketches. If it is wrong, it is very easy to make changes. With all designs, unless they are marked read-only, you can edit each one of the dimensions. Internal sanity checking adjusts other dimensions of the locomotive to make sure that your loco is mechanically possible. You can add backgrounds to your locomotive picture. The simplest way is to copy the correctly sized blank to a suitable graphics package and then copy back into the sketchpad. You can easily share your new locomotive with other sketchpad users. The data is a simple text file. Copy the data file into your data area and add the locomotive to your list. To show just some of the variations in the locomotive during its life, there are a number of options which are available at runtime. The headlamps, for example. You can optionally show a home signal. By default, some options are turned off. You can activate these options from menus, but many are gathered together in the General Options form, a one-stop shop for most options. If you have a favourite combination of locomotive livery and scene background, you can set this up as a theme. A few themes are supplied with the application. An advanced feature is the possible build variations. Depending on the locomotive, you are able to go beyond the standard GWR build. These features are likely to have crept into GWR locomotive design after 1948. Another option is to override the internal rules which are based on GWR practice. Using these GWR rules overrides and possible build variations, you can view locomotives which may have been based on GWR practice. Engine number one started life as a 440 tank, but was quickly rebuilt. Few pictures exist of this experimental locomotive, but with a sketch pad you can see what this locomotive may have looked like, and recreate other Great Western experimental locomotives.